evident earlier on, I mean, before we got that GDP read, so before 11.30, we we're actually trading up to that in the red. So, you know, that's while other markets were very much in positive territory. The GDP numbers certainly had an impact not only on our markets, but around the region. Our market was in the red, as you mentioned, James, before those GDP numbers were released. We saw an absolutely fantastic set of numbers for that first quarter of the year, and we saw the Australian market really turning around. We have a look at the intraday graph. You can see exactly the impact in terms of the Australian market after those numbers. However, we did underperform the region. Our market was up by 0.3%, but you compare it against the Japanese Nikkei, which is up by 1.8%, or the Hang Seng, which is up by 1.2%, and it was a relatively mild performance, especially given that the U.S. futures are up by half a percent. I guess one of the things is that the stock market is more focused in on China and what's happening around the world. And if we have a look at the Shanghai Composite today, it also was an underperformer. It's looking quite flat. And if we looked towards tonight, there's a lot of data to be released. We'll be watching the European Central Bank meeting where the consensus is for rates to remain on hold. But we'll be getting renewed output forecasts as well as inflation forecasts there. We'll be getting GDP numbers out of the Eurozone and the Beige Book out of the US as well. So a jam-packed night uh, tonight. Unfortunately, the Australian market underperforming, although we did see a turnaround on the back of those GDP numbers. John, to our market and what we're seeing in terms of equities, what about from, from a, a chart perspective? Are there any sort of signals as to, to where we're likely to be moving from there? Or are we still very much in, and I suppose, one of those, those channels that we have been stuck in for a while? We are a little bit in wait and see territory, but we are above the 4,000 mark at the moment. There is a little bit of resistance just under that 4,100 point mark, but the market's really looking towards those policy responses. And I guess it is a race to debase currency at the moment, and gold is part of that because, of course, if we know if we get the biggest quantitative easing out of the US, that would be good news for gold. But on the other hand, if you get massive quantitative easing out of Europe, then gold, which is traded in US dollar terms, well, we could see it go up the other way. So while gold has been, uh, I guess, a, an alternative currency, the main thing is that is, it is traded in US dollar terms and it depends on where we see that money printing from. That G7 meeting overnight was interesting as well because it was the Japanese yen which was in focus mm -hmm. and the Japanese um, pointing to uh, being willing to devalue their yen again and we saw massive moves in the yen overnight. So it's not just quantitative easing out of the US that we're watching, but it does look like that race to debase currency is once again on and over the last few weeks we have seen that US dollar strengthening off and of course that the talk about quantitative easing, seeing some weakness in that US currency. I want to focus on some corporate news. There was some about Jeweler and I suppose a lot of move once again centered around that aviation industry yesterday. Of course, we had the concerns over Qantas in their profit warning. Today, news Etihad continues to build its stake in Virgin Australia. I think they've told us now they hold about 5% of the stock. It does come at a time when Qantas is down and out and in fact we saw Qantas' shares reaching a new record low this morning so adding to those losses that we saw yesterday we're just hearing that uh, Etihad has built his position to just over, uh, just under 5% of Virgin and if we have a look at one of the things that Virgin has done well is it's building these strategic alliances with Etihad, with Delta, with Singapore Airlines and I guess one of the problems is that there is more competition. The competition from these Middle Eastern Airlines means that that uh, London route is coming under pressure from Qantas at a time when it is struggling. So it is facing more capacity on this London route and it does come at a quite a crucial time for Qantas. So uh, Virgin looking pretty good at the moment with a strategic, that strategic alliance with Etihad and unfortunately that's been bad news for Qantas, probably signalling more uh, competition in that crucial uh, Europe Europe line. So altogether, uh, another blow for Qantas. Qantas shares reaching an all-time record low once again this morning and unfortunately building on the losses that we saw yesterday. Qantas as an investment option just start to become attractive purely on valuation. People, a lot of people talk about the book value of Qantas and, you know, and the premium sort of trading there, the discount I should say, that it, that it trades at. But as you say, at a record low reaching today, it's closed at what, $1.12 and a half. There's got to be some people out there, I imagine, start thinking it looks attractive. I guess if you have a look at valuations and on a historical 
uh, basis, Qantas starts looking cheap. But the reason behind that is we are seeing uh, that massive profit downgrade being priced in, where it sees that huge drop in the underlying profit, and that international uh, business still has to be turned around. But of course, Qantas is a cyclical business, and if we see some of the factors that have, that have been dragging it down start to go in Qantas's favour, then we know that these airline stocks can turn around quite quickly as well. One of the things that has been dragging it down quite severely is uh, jet fuel. We have seen prices coming off. Off, We've seen oil prices remarkably weaker over the last month, so that's a positive there. Competition, unfortunately, looks like it is here to stay. But the other uh, part of it is the cyclical issue. Once, If we do start to see an uptick once again in terms of global growth and in terms of confidence, then that would be good news for Qantas. Yeah, and the last year tips, uh, media stocks, because of their cyclical nature, to maybe come back in vogue up to the moment certainly hasn't been the case when you look at the likes of 10, 7 West Media and of course Fairfax. Cyclical as well as structural challenges and if you have a look at this space some of those companies that have adapted very well to the structural changes in the industry are, are doing extremely well. We're seeing things like uh, car sales, Seek, uh, What If um, as well as uh, 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 travel companies doing very well out of the being able to build on uh, structural advantages but unfortunately some of these older media companies having trouble adapting and of course it doesn't help that we are at a cyclical low as well but really in terms of capital raisings I guess having a look at the environment and it's almost a binary outcome either we get through and muddle through this European crisis and it becomes a better environment or the European crisis gets work worse and it becomes remarkably hard to raise capital so I guess those companies that do need strengthening in balance sheets looking down the track and because it's a binary outcome it's probably much better to look at raising capital now than further down the track where things could potentially be much worse or much better one of the two but nothing really in between. Indeed, look